Dutch Sense here. It is 10.03 p.m. Central Time on Friday, August 5th. I wanted to show you something that I've been poring over for a little while now, and this all arises from, I get several people who still come on to my harp and harp ring videos, and they say that harp can't be used for anything up below the ionosphere, that it's for ionospheric research. And so this is how they can happen all in the same day. They, they do this as a relay. You see how it first goes there, then it probably goes up off the atmosphere, back down to here, up off, back down to here. Right, some of these are very impressive and you can see the level that they're operating on. And when you see the levels they're broadcasting in, it's the same levels that, that these documents over on the patent sites show that they're operating on, the, on those frequency levels. All this listed on my main Dutch Sense page. Here's the first harp patent that I have listed on here, but this is just several of the important ones. And here it is, this should debunk anybody who says that it's only for the ionosphere. Artificial ionospheric mirror composed of a plasma layer which can be tilted. This invention relates to generation of an artificial ionospheric mirror, an AIM, or a plasma layer in the atmosphere. Now just stop right there, a plasma layer in the atmosphere. Okay, and uh, there is no plasma layer in the atmosphere, it has to be created. And the way you create a plasma field in the atmosphere is through spraying of certain particles up in the atmosphere that aid in frequency manipulation to cause a layer of plasma. And that's the, the wave. See these waves here? That's the wavy harp cloud that we all see from time to time. It's descriptions of how it works. And these come from government documents. These are not just made by someone. Okay, here's an actual 3D cloud shot, so you know it's not just on radar. It actually occurred on cloud cover too. Diagrams of how the radar flares occur, and then shot after shot of, of different types of systems they're using. This is out of Minot, North Dakota several years ago. Here's a shot I did. The concentric rings, the catcher's mitt that's waiting for the harp signal. Here's a vortex generation system. Again, frequency manipulation. Here are the scalar squares that I'm talking about. These are the squares that come down on top of the rings. You've got a ring that appears and then a square that appears on top of it. Or the cooling or heating of a storm, and they call it harp clouds now because they form in a wave. Then what they do is through a series of ground-based systems, harp, this would be harp right here, the grid, it projects up into the atmosphere and it projects down to this, the tilted mirror. So they create this with spraying, they're able to create a tiltable mirror depending on which way they, they manipulate it with frequency to reflect down to a house or to another dish that reflects higher up into the cloud itself, back down to planes which are flying beneath. Okay, so let's go on. The aim is used like the ionosphere to reflect RF energy over great distances. A tiltable aim is created by a heater antenna controlled in phase and frequency. The heater antenna is the ground-based system, the dish, the harp ring that we're seeing. And they're launching it from harp or from other facilities. It comes back down to the ground-based system that then relays it on. And so we're seeing these relay systems pop up from time to time at different cities and different spots. They've apparently put them at Nexrad sites. Let me continue on. The heater antenna phase shift scans a beam to paint a plasma layer. In other words, it's, it scans out a beam and we see the beams in what several of the HARP researchers call beam attacks. And it's not actually an attack now, I think we can determine. It's actually part of the same system. Frequency is changed to refocus at continually higher altitudes to tilt the plasma layer. Okay, and that explains our concentric rings inside of each other. As they go up, they change frequency and it goes basically through the spectrum. 
Now, okay, that's this patent here, and they've got a couple diagrams, how, how it's the control module, focus points, that kind of stuff. See this here? See this square and how it's being projected down from 22? They don't have 22 labeled on here. So there is pages missing, of course. They're probably classified. But this is supposed to be the atmosphere up here. This is a point of reflection down here. Okay? And look what it projects down into. A square. Here's the wavy clouds up above. This, this represents the different waves in the clouds, the harp cloud. And look what it does. They reflect it down in a tiltable mirror. And it comes down to the ground in a square fashion. They show it here multiple points, like a staircase or a sawtooth pattern, and then multiple squares down below. X, Y, Z axis, of course. Axis. And you, you can see it. It's right here. In a diagram, how they project a tiltable mirror to reflect a harp frequency which is broadcast from a square station. The square station comes up, bounces back down to the ground, where it's picked up by a receiving station, the circular station, and then relayed on. So that explains why we see a square overlay on top of a round ring return. They're beaming it down to the round receiver. The round receiver is sitting there like a catcher's mitt, waiting to catch square frequency to relay it on. Okay, here are the patents. We have to go one patent down. Okay, see this right here? This comes up and comes back down to the Earth. Now, as it comes up and comes back down to the Earth, you can imagine the Earth's magnetic field being a whole bunch of these, it's not just one. And the signal from HARP goes up into these bands of mag magnetic energy and comes back down to a point on the South Pole and vice versa. And so one of the, con that's called a conjugate point, the point where it comes back down to Earth and they can place a relay there, which, if you go read the documentation on the, on the HARP one hop experiment, they can bounce it around out here for an indefinite period of time. They can literally put a relay station back there where the signal they found, when it reaches a certain point down here, not at the surface, but before it reaches the surface, the resistance is as such that it bounces it back to its original point, back to HARP. And that's how it works. So they place these uh, these buoys around the entire planet to do that at at spots where well, you know where you can't have a land-based system. So here's another ground-based frequency generator. I've got pictures of harp rings, how they create the artificial ionospheric mirror in the atmosphere. I've got station maps of all the Digison, Radioson, VLF facilities, where they're located, how it's an international consortium of, of companies and governments doing this. It's not just the United States and HARP. If you want to control the weather in the United States, you're going to have to start over in Russia, and vice versa. If you want to control the weather in Russia, you have to start in the United States. So it requires a, a cooperative effort between these different companies different states, different organizations. Here's an actual picture of the buoy, the one-hop buoy.